So, welcome to the week 7 or course unit 7 and the topic for today is all about the lens of the camera. So, what? Uh, these are the topics, the different types of lens in the camera, the types of lenses according to their focal length, types of lens aberrations, and methods of focusing. Siguro naman nakakita na kayo ng lens ng camera. Nakakita na ba ang lahat? Diba? Pero alam ko nakakita Pero yung iba hindi naman nila alam ang parts So before we start We, uh, we should uh, watch this one Para meron lang kayong parang preview Kung ano nga ba ang lens At paano ba nagpa-function ang lens ng camera If you look at a scene through a single lens it appears upside down. Why is that? Lenses that are thicker at the middle are called convex lenses. These lenses cause parallel light rays to converge to a single point called the focal point. When light rays pass through the lens, they do not travel in straight lines, but rather bend slightly inward this phenomenon is called refraction. When light rays pass through the lens, they refract and converge to a single point to produce an image. Because the image passes through the lens to the opposite side, it is projected upside down. This process alone, however, is not enough to produce a sharp image. This is because, strictly speaking, a spherical convex lens alone cannot cause light to converge to a single point. The focal point where light rays passing through the center of the lens converge differs slightly from the focal point where light rays passing through the edge of the lens converge. This is called spherical aberration. In addition, color fringing may occur. This is called chromatic aberration. When light passes through a convex lens, the focal point for red light, which has a long wavelength, is farther away from the lens than the focal point for blue light, which has a short wavelength. This causes colors to shift. As a result, colors appear to bleed. Making light converge neatly to a single point requires technology. Since the direction in which spherical aberration occurs in a convex lens is opposite to a concave lens, through a combination of two or more lenses, light rays can be made to converge to a single point. This is called aberration correction. Chromatic aberration can also be corrected by combining two lenses. To achieve the most beautiful images possible, actual camera lenses incorporate multiple individual lenses that correct focus and color bleeding. Lenses for single lens reflex cameras are made up of a large number of lenses. Each lens is responsible for such roles as adjusting colors, distortion, and focus, as well as changing the focal distance. Canon takes pride in its diverse lens lineup. Each model features technology designed to capture beauty. So that is the uh, just preview of the lens. Kung nakita nyo sa video, ba? Ang mga lens or camera lens natin, hindi lang siya nag start ng isang mag lens lang siya, ma'am, or what? So, madami siyang parte, lalo na sa mga DSLR, yung mga single lens reflex lenses natin, is uh, binubuo yan ng madaming lenses uh, responsible for us to capture or to correct each other lenses. So, what is lens ba? So, a lens is a system of one or more pieces of glasses bounded by spherical surfaces, the center of which is at a common axis term as lens axis. So, ito yung lens. Okay? Yan po ang lens natin. So, sa lens natin, sabi ko nga sa inyo, marami rin siyang part. Meron siyang zoom. 
de ba? Meron siyang focusing, meron siyang mga meters, ganyan. So ito yung mga parts ng lens. Okay, we have the focusing ring, the hood mount, the contacts, de ba? We also have the filter thread, the image stabi stabilizer switch. Ah, uh, yung image stabilizer switch para siyang um function para hindi magulo yung camera or kahit pag mag-take ka tapos shaky eh hindi lalabas na shaky yung kinukuhanan mo focus mode switch the zoom ring the zoom position index okay so this is the anatomy of lens so tingnan nyo ito yung filter thread or yung pinaka labas or the outer and then we also have the focusing ring ayan nakikita nyo ba lagyan ko ng pointer ha ayan ito yung focusing ring Yan. Magkaiba po ba ang focusing ring sa zoom ring? Yes. Ang focusing ring, this is um resp uh, it is responsible para magkaroon tayo ng focus na image or yung with clear and sharp image. That is the focusing ring. Mamano pinagkaiba ng focusing ring sa zoom ring? Sa zoom ring naman, ang trabaho nito is for the um alam niyo yung pagiging farthest and nearest ng isang object. Zoom. Yan. Iba ang focus sa zoom. Ang zoom, gagawin niyang malayo or malapit ang ating object or subject sa mismong photography. Ang focusing ring, ang ginagawa niya is, from the word self focus, kailangan maging siyang sharp yung image. Then, we also have this, the aperture ring. So, itong aperture ring naman ito, it indicates the focal numbers. Diba? Yung mga f-stops natin kung gaano kalaki or kaliit yung butas po ng ating aperture. Do you still remember the aperture? Ha? Huh? Can you still remember what is aperture? Wala yata akong kausap. Do you still remember what is aperture? Yung aperture, ito yung parang uh, bilog. Diba? This is the aperture. What is focal length? Wait. Ito, di ba? Ito po ang aperture natin. Yan. Yan ang aperture. Saan nakikita nga ito? Di ba? Sa mismong lens. Ayan. Ito yung lumiliit tsaka lumalaki kapag iniikot natin yung aperture ring. So, don't you worry next week pag lalaroan natin yung aperture. Pero for today, ang ano muna natin is lens. Ayan, ito yon, Ito yung may mga F numbers. ba? If you could remember yung ating reverse psychology ng aperture, the more na mas maliit or the more na mas maliit ang number ng aperture or F-stops, the more na mas malaki yung butas niya. Kapag naman mas mataas yung number ng F-stop natin, for example, dito sa aperture ring, eh, sinet mo siyang 16, eh, mas maliit ang butas ng ating aperture. Then, we also have the distance indicator. Kung gaano kalayo at kalapit ang kaya niyang kuhanan. Then, uh, we also have the lens mount. Dito natin nilalagay yung mismong parang, ito yung connector. Connector natin sa mismong camera. Yan. So, focal length. Mag-start tayo kay focal length. We will start now with the lens characteristics. Before we continue, uh, or before going to the types or different types of lenses and the aberrations, punta muna tayo sa characteristics ng lens. Ano po ba ang meron sa lens, ba? Number one, uh, characteristics of a lens is what we call the focal length. The question is, what is focal length, ma'am? Ba? Focal length, it is the distance measured from the optical center of the lens to the film plane when the lens is focused at infinity position. According to focal lens, lenses may be classified as... Ito. Ano ba ang focal length na sinasabi ko? Panoorin nyo to. What is focal length? Focal length, usually represented in millimeters, is a basic description of a photographic lens. The measurement is not the length of the lens itself, but actually a calculation of the optical distance from where all light rays converge inside the lens to the image sensor of the camera. So a lens with a focal length of 24 millimeters, for example, would have light rays coverage 24 millimeters above the image sensor. The focal length number tells us the angle of view, how much of the scene will be captured, and the magnification, how large a subject will appear. The lower the number, 
the wider the field of view and lower the magnification, increasing the amount of the scene that our camera can see. The larger the number, the narrower the field of view, and greater the magnification, decreasing the amount of the scene our camera can see. It's also... Yan, ipost ko lang muna ha. Ito yung focal length natin. So, yung focal length, uh, binibigay niya yung distance kung gaano or kaano kalayo, diba? gaano kalayo or gaano kalapit or gaano kahaba yung ating makakapture through the use of that lens. Sabi niya, the lower the number of the focal length, the shorter the focal length. And the higher the number, the longer the focal length. Hindi, wala siyang reverse dito. Okay? Kapag mas konti, for example, ang focal length natin is just only 24 uh, tawag dito, 24 mm. Ayan, 24 millimeters. So, therefore, mas maliit yung kanyang focal length. Kapag naman higher number niya, sabihin natin 70 mm, then, therefore, mas mahaba or longer ang kanyang focal length. So, let's continue. It's worth noting that oftentimes photographers will refer to larger focal lengths as longer and smaller focal lengths as shorter. While the lens you attach to your camera comes with a focal length, depending on the type of camera you attach to it, its focal length can actually vary. Back in the days of film, 35mm film was the standard sensor size of all types of photography. Once film cameras left the scene, digital cameras replaced them with many different sized sensors, the majority of them smaller. 50mm lenses regarded as a standard focal length for film became a short telephoto on the new smaller sensor cameras. This is due to something called crop factor. Full frame cameras do not have any crop factor since they operate on a standard 35mm format used in the days of film. APS-C sensors, however, have a crop factor of 1.5 for Nikon or 1.6 for Canon. What this means is any lens attached to an APS-C camera will need to have its focal length multiplied by either 1.5 or 1.6 to get its effective focal length. The actual focal length of the lens remains unchanged, but switching camera bodies that have different sensor sizes will change what the picture will look like. For example, if I have a 50mm lens on a full-frame camera, its effective focal length will be 50mm. But if I swap it to a crop sensor camera with a crop factor of 1.5, the effective focal length suddenly becomes 75 millimeters. There are other camera form factors as well, but full frame APS-C cameras are most common. When considering a lens, there are a number of categories defined by ranges of focal lengths. The widest lenses are the fisheye or ultra-wide lenses. These lenses have focal ranges from 8 mm to 24 mm. They are limited in use and typically used for landscape or architecture. They create such a wide angle of view that images can sometimes appear distorted, and they are not suitable for all portraits since they make facial features look distorted. Next comes regular wide angle lenses, with focal lengths typically between 24 mm to 35 mm. This is where distortion stops appearing unnatural. Standard lenses with focal lengths between 35 mm to 70 mm produce images that most closely reproduce what our eyes see. They are great walk-around lenses and very popular. Telephoto lenses typically start around 70 mm and end around 300 mm. Portrait lenses fall in this range, and as you increase focal length, Telephoto compression will cause foreground and background objects to appear close together. Extreme telephoto lenses round out the bunch with focal length exceeding 300 mm. These lenses are used for wildlife and situations where extreme magnification is required. Within these categories lie prime and zoom lenses. Prime lenses are lenses that have a fixed focal length. They are often simpler lenses, making them easier to manufacture and in return cost less and usually are of higher quality than zoom lenses. Zoom lenses, on the other hand, cover a range of focal lengths and because of their versatility, allow you to carry, say, one lens instead of two or three to cover the same focal range. The only drawbacks are the increased cost and slightly reduced quality from manufacturing something so complex. Focal length is a simple concept, but an important one. By the end of this video, you will have learned the... So, balikan lang natin tong konti. 
Ayan. ba? Diba? Sa lens classification, kung makikita nyo, ang sabi niya dito, ang mga prime lens or yung mga tinatawag nating prime lenses, ito yung mga uh, lenses na simpler design dahil fixed focal length. So, for example, 24mm. Ibig sabihin, 24mm lang siya. Hindi katulad ng mga zoom lenses or yung mga ganito. Ibig sabihin, marami silang... Uh, For example, 24mm to 35mm. So, therefore, ang kanyang scope of distance is from 24mm to 35mm. So, naimpibyan po ba yung focal length? When we say focal length, this is the distance, this is the scope, or kung gaano kalayo or kalapit yung pwede mong kuhanin. Sabi nga ng ating video kanina, the higher the number of the focal length, the Larger, sabi niya. Kapag naman din, kapag smaller, the shorter. Ganun tayo. Wala naman siyang reverse when it comes to focal length. So, naiintindihan ba yung focal length niyan? Hello? May kausap pa ba ako? Naiintindihan pa ba ang focal length niyan? Papa. Next, another characteristics of the lens is the relative aperture. So, what is relative aperture? So, relative aperture is the light gathering power of the lens, which is expressed in the number in the f number system, or yung tinatawag nating f stop numbers. It is otherwise called as the relative apertures or the lens. Opening by increasing or decreasing the f number numerically, it is it is possible to A. Control the amount of light passing through the lens. B. Control the depth of build. And the last one is control the degree of sharpness due to lens defect. Yung relative aperture, eto na yung sinasabi ko na, Len. Eto. Ayan. So, isa sa characteristics, ito nga yung lens opening natin. That is the meaning of the apertures. So, ano nga sabi kong scenario natin sa aperture? The smaller the number, anong mangyayari? The bigger yung kanyang opening. Tingnan nyo. F1.4, pero yung opening niya is much bigger. F32, okay? F stands for focal, di ba? F32, tingnan nyo, the shorter yung or the smaller yung kanyang opening. Naintindihan po niyan kung ano ang aperture. Kanina ang pinag-uusapan natin, the distance. Kung gaano kala yung pwedeng scope ng ating mga lenses. Ito naman, kung gaano kalaki at kaliit ang aperture, yung butas ng ating lenses. Kasi dito sa butas na yan, no, yung aperture, dyan po po mapasok yung light wherein it is able to capture or without the light, we cannot capture a image. Sabi nga natin, without this aperture or with this aperture, we can control the depth of field, the amount of light, and the degree of sharpness of the lenses. Yan. So, ano ba yung mga relative aperture? So, number one, we have depth of field. What is DOF, ma'am, or depth of field? It is the distance measured from the nearest to the farthest object in apparent sharp Focus when the lens is set or focus up at a particular distance. Eto yun no. Eto yung focus distance natin. Ibig sabihen, eto yung nakafocus kanyan. So, eto yung depth of field nyan. Balik lang tayo don ha. Ano bang ibig sabi nulit ng depth of field? It is the distance measured from nearest to the farthest object in an apparent sharp focus. Sharp focus. Okay, let's continue. Let's watch this first para mas lalo nyong maintindihan. Okay, I know that everyone is struggling. Kaya siguro hindi kayo makasagot sa akin ng maayos ngayon. Kasi lahat naninibago pa kayo para na mga tayong professional photographer, ma'am. Uh, actually, pagkatapos nyong malaman talaga or mapag-aralan itong forensic photography, eh parang mga feeling photographer na kayo. Kasi lahat ng mechanics po or technicalities about the use of the cameras, manually, eh alam nyo na dapat. 
Okay. Kasi ang alam lang natin ngayon, nowadays, is magtitake ka lang ng picture. Kuhanin mo lang yung cellphone mo, meron namang autofocus, ma'am, siya ng bahala. But sa subject natin, hindi po ganun ang gagawin natin. Babalik tayo sa pagiging pro or pagiging manual. Kailangan alam mong kalikutin yung mesmong camera. So, let's start first. What is depth of field? How's it going everyone? Kellen Reck here and today we're talking depth of field. What is it? How do we affect it? And how can we make everything look boss? Let's talk depth of field. It's the range of what is in focus in your shot. It's the distance from the nearest object in focus to the furthest object in focus within your frame. You can see in this photo from photographylife.com that we can have a different depth of field. On one end, we've got a narrow depth of field, and on the other end, we have a large or wide depth of field. This means that we can have varying distances of what's in focus within our shot. So what are the ways that we can affect this? Well, there's three. You've got aperture, you've got the distance to your subject, and you've also got the focal length of your lens. So let's talk about the first here, aperture. Aperture is the opening in your lens. Now, the, the wider that opening, the smaller the actual number, the shallower the depth of field. So if we're shooting an interview at f1.8 like this, we've got a shallow depth of field. I'm in focus, the background is out of focus. If we crank that aperture up to something like f18, where we have a very closed down aperture, you're gonna start to see a lot more in focus. Our depth of field gets wider. So everything behind me is gonna be in focus in addition to myself. The second way to affect depth of field is distance to your subject. The closer you are to your subject, the shallower the depth of field. If the camera's very close to me, there's gonna be a much shallower depth of field versus if the camera's much farther away. The things that are behind and in front of me might be in focus if the camera's much further away. The closer we are to an object, the shallower the depth of field. The further away, the wider the depth of field. And finally, the focal length of your lens affects depth of field. The longer the focal length, the shallower the depth of field. So let's take a 100 millimeter lens. All of the shots on a 100 millimeter lens will have a much shallower depth of field than on a wide lens like a 16 millimeter. All three of these things affect the way that light is hitting your camera sensor and thus are giving you those varying depth of fields. Now, why is it important to understand depth of field and how to affect it? Well, it can make a big difference in your photography and your filmmaking. Say you're a landscape photographer and you want this nice, beautiful landscape shot. You want everything in focus. Well, you need to know how to do that. You need to know that you want to close down your aperture. You need to know that you want some distance and you want to use a wide lens and that's going to help you get everything in focus. Whereas a filmmaker might want to shoot an interview that has a nice out of focus background and really isolates your subject. Well, you need to know how to get a shallow depth of field for that. So you might want a telephoto lens and it the aperture to be opened up nice and wide and that'll help give you that shallow depth of field. So there's different ways that you can use these three um, options of affecting depth of field to give you the stylized shots that you want. I hope that this video helped you. I have another video on camera basics that kind of has an overview of different aspects of photography and filmmaking, but I wanted to dive deep into depth of field to give you an understanding of how you can use it and how you can affect it and uh, improve your own skills. So thanks for checking out the video. We'll be back. Nakita nyo yun, yung sa video niya na dito part. Gusto ko tong part na to. Where we have very closed. Yan. Ano nga yung F? Yung mga F1.8, F18, ito yung mga tinatawag nating Focal. Focal. Ano nga ang tawag Focal dyan? numbers. Focal numbers. Focal Saan? Ano tawag dyan? Sa? Ah? Aperture. <laughs> Aperture. That is the opening of the lens. Tingnan nyo, ano bang sabi natin? Kapag mas mababa ang number ng aperture, ibig sabihin, mas? Ano mangyayari? Mas malaki. Mas malaki yung butas niya. What will happen? Diba? What will happen if mas malaki yung butas ng ating aperture or mas, mala, mas, or mas marami yung uh, light na pumapasok sa ating lens? Tingnan nyo. Magiging blurred yung nasa likod niya. Okay? So, yung mga focal numbers, yung F1.8, F18, 
hindi natin pinag-uusapan dito yung distance. Ha? Ang pinag-uusapan lang natin dito is gaano kalaki at kala kaliit ang butas ng lens. Kapag naman ang pinag-usapan natin is distance, yung kayang uh, makuha or scope ng ating lenses, ito yung tinatawag nating focal length. Ito yung kanwari, yung, yung lenses mo is from 50 millimeters to 100 millimeters. Ganyan, error. 24 mm to 35 mm. Sukat yon focal length yon Tingnan nyo anong nangyari. Kapag F18, ibig sabihin, anong nangyari kapag ang aperture natin ay mas mataas ang number? Kapag ang F number ay mas mataas, therefore, ang butas ng camera or aperture ng camera ay mas lumiliit. lumiliit. Anong nangyari? Mas nagkakaroon ng focus. Nakita nyo? Mas nagkakaroon tayo ng focus. Ito, dito, sino ang nakafocus lang? Sa F1.8, di ba yung tao lang? Ano ba ibig sabihin ng focus? Balikan lang natin, ang ibig sabihin ng focus, this is the sharper image. Malinaw, di ba? Sharper and brighter image. So, ma'am, anong ibig sabihin ng depth of field? So, yung depth of field, this is the nearest and farthest object na nakasharp yung mismong image natin. Alam ko, meron tayong photo dito eh. So, wait. Ayan. So, what is depth of field, ma'am? Ito siya. Ayan. Ibig sabihin, this is the depth of field from dito. Ayan. Yung pinaka to. At saka dito. Ayan. That is a depth of field. Therefore, itong part na to, mula dito hanggang dyan, okay, mula dito sa kalahating katawan ng di ko alam kung oso or what, hanggang dito sa malapit sa isang puno, ayan, yan ang depth of field natin. Ibig sabihin, yun ang nakafocus. Yung lugar na yun ang nakafocus. Naintindihan na niyan yung depth of field? Yes, po. Okay, paunti-unti, maglalaro na yan tayo, maglalaro na yung mga cameras nyo. For example, ito yung camera natin. So, for example, ang lens natin is 24mm to 50mm. So, kung kanwari, magsimula dito hanggang dito, yun ang scope niya. Yun ang kayang maging scope ng ating uh, camera lens. Yun ang tinatawag nating focal length. Okay? And depth of field naman, ito yung, ulitin ko lang, this is the nearest and the farthest wherein the camera lens is on sharp mode. Ano nga bang meaning ng depth of field? Sabi niya, it is the distance measured from the nearest to the farthest object in apparent sharp focus. Naintindihan na niyan ang depth of field. Ah, do you understand now? Mami, ibig sabihin nyo ito, yung mga yan, yung mga blurred na yan, hindi po siya depth of field. Hindi siya. Kasi nga, ano bang ibig sabihin ng depth of field? Kailangan nakafocus siya. Okay. Next. Yan. Aperture range. Ayan. So, tingnan nyo. The more na mas malaki po yung butas ng ating aperture, or kaya nga bumaba yung kanyang number, the more na mas nagiging alang maliit yung nakafocus. So, kung kanwari, ikaw, gusto mo nagiging blurred yung nasa likod mo, dyan naglalaro yung mga uh, mga professional photographer natin. Ma'am, bakit ang galing? Nag nag nagagawa niyang maging blurred yung nasa likod. Ayan. Bakit po nagagawa niyang uh, yung part lang na to yung blurred? Tapos, or kaya kahit malayo yung kinukuha na niya, nakafocus. Kasi nilalaro po nila yan. Yan kasi yung mga tinatawag natin na Pillars of photography, which is yung topic naman natin next week. So, for now, ang focus lang natin is about the lenses. Ayan. Tignan nyo, F2.8. The shorter the number, the bigger the opening of the aperture. So, therefore, kung mas malaki ang opening ng aperture, mas maliit naman ang finofocus niya. Okay? Or mas maliit ang depth of field niya. Naiintindihan ba niyan? Puro reverse siya, di ba? Puro reverse mechanics po siya. Nagigets niyo po ba ang sinasabi ko niyan? Opo. Okay, next. Ayan, F2.0. 
f5.6. Diba? f2.0, mas malaki yung mismong aperture niya. Anong nangyari? Ang focus niya is mas maliit lang. Diba? The more na humahaba or lumalaki niyan yung f number natin, the more na lumiliit yung ating lens opening, the more na nas nagiging sharp yung ating image. Next! Kasama pa rin po sa relative aperture is what we call the hyperfocal distance. What is hyperfocal distance naman? It is the nearest distance at which a lens is focused with a given diaphragm opening which will give the maximum depth of field. So, ito naman ang hyperfocal distance. Balik lang tayo dito sa picture kanina ha. Ito. Ayan. Ayan. So, di ba ito yung depth of field natin? Yan ang depth of field. Ito yung hyperfocal distance. The maximum, the nearest, sabi nga niya, the nearest maximum uh, sharp image. That is the, what we call that? Anong tawag doon? Hello? Anong tawag doon? That is what we call hyperfocal distance. It is the nearest distance, yung pinakamalapit sa camera, at which the lens is focused with a given diaphragm opening. Naintindihan ba niyan? Baka next week sa quiz may ipalabel ako sa inyo, eh, hindi nyo malabel. Okay, that is hyperfocal distance. Next, another characteristics is the focusing. So, di ba nga sabi ko sa inyo, isa sa mga parts ng ating lens is the focusing ring. Okay. So, focusing ring it uh, or focusing, it is the setting of proper distance in order to form a sharp image. The lens of the camera except those fixed focus requires focusing. A lens may be focused by any of the following. So, we have different techniques on how we can Focus or set in focus yung mga lenses natin ng camera. Number one dyan is yung tinatawag nating focusing scale or scale bed. So, it is a scale which is usually found at the lens barrel indicating the preset distance in feet or in meters. To focus the lens of the camera, the distance of the object to be photographed is measured, estimated, or calculated, and the point or marker on the lens barrels is adjusted to corresponding number on the scale. Ito yan. Diba? So, yan ang tinatawag nating focusing ring. Usually, yung focusing ring din natin, or ito rin yung tinatawag nating aperture ring. Kasi, ah, uh, Dito siya na parang sizes, de ba? Kung gaano siya kalayo, de ba? Or gaano kalapit, tapos i-adjust natin yung kanyang opening para magkaroon ng focus. Ayan. Iba po yung sa distance ng yung kanware kung gaano kalayo yung gusto mo. For example, yes, yung zoom. Iba yun ha. Iba ang focusing ring or tinatawag nating aperture ring sa zoom. Okay, dito. Ayan. So, yung mga 1, 1.5, 2, 3, 5, 10, yan ang tinatawag natin, focusing ring. Okay, yan yung sizes. Okay, next. So, sometimes yung iba, para, mag, uh, para maku makuha yung pinaka-focus, yun ang ina-adjust nila. Yung sa mismong lens. Okay. Yung iba naman, okay, ang ginagawa nila is, uh, through the use of range, Finders, or yan. Yung sa mismong, hindi sila uh, ina-adjust nila or tinitingnan nila yung focus through this one. Meron din ganyan sa mga cellphone nyo. ba? Diba? Ito yung parang box box. ba? Diba? Ito rin yung parang bilog. ba? Diba? So, range finders. It is a mechanism that measures the angle of the convergence of light coming from subject as seen from two apertures. There are two types of range finder, finders. Ito yan. So, what is range finders? So, number one, we have the split image. Ayan. Ito yung split image. So, through the range finder, the image of a straight line in the object appears to be cut into halves and separated from each other when the lens is not focus. Alam na alam mo na hindi nakafocus yung mismong camera mo kapag Yung image dito is parang hindi siya pantay. Saan nakikita yan, ma'am? Ang split image, ito, applicable siya sa mga gantong merong mga 
uh, focusing range. Ayan, or range finders. Nakikita nyo yung hati sa gitna. Kapag yan yung image dun sa mesmong gitna na yan, eh hindi nagpapantay. Therefore, or ganito ang kinalalabasan. Therefore, hindi po nakafocus ang inyong camera lens. So, that is what we call split image. Yung iba naman, meron siyang technique na tinatawag na coincident image. Through the eyepiece of a single image, it is seen double when the subject is out of focus. So, make the image coincide and the lens is in focus. Sometimes, makikita yan dito. Ayan, or yung ditong part. Ayan. Pag hindi siya nagpapantay, ganyan, or nagdodouble siya, ang tawag dun ay coincident image. Then, the next one, three times po yung ating uh, range finders, ha? Sorry, dun sa dalawa. Dun sa pinakalas one niya is yung ground glass. Ground glass is focused directly by observing the image form at the ground glass. Ito, for example, itong buong to. Ayan, kapag dito mo tinitingnan. Uh, sabi niya, the image of a straight line in the object appear, ay, sorry, dito siya. Isa na yun. Ayan. So, If the image form is blurry, ayan, or fuzzy, or not clear, the lens is out of focus. It makes the image sharp and the lens is in focus. Saan nga nakikita yan? Ito na yung sa mismong... Saan yung nakikita to? Yung mga yan. Sa view finder. Saan ba yung part ng view finder ng camera? Ha? Ano ba yung view finder ng camera? May kausap pa ba ako? Ano yung viewfinder ng camera? Yung viewfinder ng camera, ito yung kung saan nyo tinitingnan yung image, di ba? That is the viewfinder. Kung saan nyo tinututok yung mata nyo. Kapag tinutok mo kasi yung uh, mata mo dun sa mismong viewfinder, may makikita kang ganyan. ba? Diba? May makikita kang ganyan sa gitna. So, ito yung tinatawag nating range finder. So, yung iba, uh, kinakalikot nila yung kanilang focusing ring. Through the use of those. Yan, yung mga circles na yan. Yung sa pinakagitna. So, kapag nakikita nila na hindi nagpapantay, kanwari split image siya, or nagdodouble, coincident image, kapag naman nagbilbird, therefore, alam na alam nilang hindi nakafocus ang kanilang camera lens. So, anong gagawin nila? Ia-adjust nila yung focusing scale natin. So, yung iba, yung tinatawag naman na yung focusing scale or scale bed, nagre-rely sila ng focus naman sa mesmong Uh, hindi nila tinitingnan sa, lo sa loob. Ang tinitingnan nila doon sa mesmong pag-ikot lang ng mesmong focusing scale ng outside ng lenses. Nakakasunod ba kayo? O, oh, ito. Let's watch this one para uh, mas maintindihan nyo. Hello, I'm recording a short video to demonstrate how manual focused lenses were focused back Manually, in the old nag, days. Ano siya, nagpo-focus. Um, the camera here is a Minolta X700, and the lens is a Tamron a 90mm f2.8 macro. And I've rigged up a little, uh, a couple of tripods here to put the video camera pointing straight to the viewfinder. Give us a kind of crude imitation of what it's like to look through the thing. So now I'll focus the lens. Got a bookshelf in the background here. I'm coming at it from an angle. Um, zoom in on the focus aids there. You can see that the split prism is pushing part of the image up, part of the image to the left and part to the right. And when the focus is dead on, um, the two images come together. It's extremely handy and really pretty fast way to focus. Now the micro prism ring gets very jagged when it's out of focus, but as it pops into focus, it almost disappears, um, like it's not there at all. It's it's really handy for telling when the focus is on. So, pag hindi nagpapantay yung sa gitna, ang tawag dun ay split image. So, therefore, hindi nakafocus. Now, as far as I understand, the modern uh, digital SLRs, the autofocus works in essentially the same way as that split prism there. It's bringing two parts of the image together, just like that. 
and they're they're measuring how far apart those two halves are and then that tells them how big a change they need to make to the focus of the lens. You can see a few limitations to it. I've, I've lined up uh, the books at a 90 degree angle to the split prism. If, the, if they were aligned with the prism, um, it's quite a bit more difficult. It would be quite a bit more difficult to see the focus point. And that's why digital SLRs have vertical and horizontal focus points and cross points, they call some of them, where they detect either um, orientation. One more point. Right now I'm at f2.8, I've got the lens wide open. If I step down a little to f4, you see not much changes, it gets a little bit darker, but not much. As I go down, that's 5.6. Now at f8, and especially if I zoom out a little here, the thing is starting to blacken over. Even though the rest of the image is still clear, the, pris the split prism just stops working. That's at f11 right there, and it just completely goes black. That's f8, 5.6, 4, 2.8. And here, here's all the way down to 32, and you can see it's completely black, even though the rest of the image is quite visible. So that that uh, that phenomenon has to do with the way the thing is working, and I don't understand all the optical details, but apparently it's sampling each each the top and the bottom are each sampling a different portion. So nakita nyo na yun yung mismong range finders. So, yung iba kasi, nagpo-focus sila kapag hindi nila kabisado. Yung kasing iba, memorize nila per distance. Kung paano magiging focus yung talagang mga professional photographer na. Kung kalmara, gano'n siya kalayo, alam na nila anong F number ang gagawin nila sa mismong aperture para makuha nila in focus. Merong mga gano'n. So, sometimes naman, nagre-rely lang sila dyan sa mismong range finder. Doon sa mismong nakikita nila sa viewfinder. Ang gagawin nila nun, iikot-ikutin nila yung mismong... Um, focusing ring or yung aperture ring para sa ma hanggang sa maging uh, clear lang or sharp image yung nabubuo dun sa mismong circle. So, it's up to you. Ka kung kanwari photographer ka, kung memorize mo yung mga F numbers, kung ga paano sila magpo-focus, kung gaano kalayo yung distance mo, then go with the focusing scale or yung scale bed na kahit hindi mo tinitingnan sa mismong uh, viewfinder, eh, by just uh, rotating the focusing ring, makukuha mo yung sharp image or yung focus image. So, sometimes naman, yung iba, hindi talaga nila makuha or hindi, sila hindi nila memorize yung mga F numbers, ganyan, ang gagawin nila, magre-rely lang sila doon sa mismong range finders na yan or in nakikita natin doon sa view finder. Pero, ma medyo mahirap po yung pagpo-focus ng ganyan. Okay. Let's continue. May tanong ba kayo before we continue? Do you have any questions? Okay, before I ask some questions, itatapusin ko lang naman to. Another lens characteristics is what we call the zone. So, what is zone? Zone, this is the possible in wide-angle lens only. Natry nyo na ba yung fisheye camera? Or natry nyo na bang gumamit ng wide-angle lens? Okay, ang wide-angle lens, ang kinakapture nito, mas malapit Okay? There are only three settings for focusing. One for close distance, diba? another for medium distance, and finally the distant objects. So sometimes, ang ginagawa nilang sa lens is yung zone method lang of focusing para hindi sila nahihirapan. There is a preset, for example, 3 to 6 feet ang layo. Ito yung uh, sinatawag dati na street smart or yung mga street photographer. Na kapag ang alam nilang layo is between 3 to 6 feet, therefore, iset nila yung focal uh, aperture nila or focal number nila into this 2.8. Eight, ganyan. Kapag mas malayo sila or 6 to 15 feet, meron sila agad preset. Ah, okay. Set ko yung aking F number sa F18. Ganyan. Kapag naman mas malayo pa sa akin, therefore, mas tataasan ko yung aking F number. Gagawin natin F32 para makuha ko yung focus. So, yung zone method na tinatawag natin, uh, nakavary na siya sa'yo or alam mo na. Usually, ang zone method of focusing, they use this kapag uh, sa streets, kapag mabilisan. 
Ibig sabihin, kapag ang tansya nila, 3 to 6 feet ang layo ko, therefore, iset ko na to ng F2.8, F2 ganyan. 6 to 15 feet ang layo ko dun sa subject, so therefore, iset ko na to. Meron na agad na pre-set of focusing. Now, ayan, yan yung zone focusing. Ayan, no? alam nila yung blurred area nila, then that is the focus area. Again, it comes along with the three distances, which is yung sometimes in... Uh, close, yung 3 to 6 feet, medium distance, 6 to 15 feet, and the finally, distant objects is the 15 feet and above. Ayan. Before we go to the convex lens, I will just ask some uh, uh, some of the uh, previous uh, discussions. So, tatanungin ko kayo, again, what is uh, focusing? Ano yung tinatawag nating focus? Used to make sharp image. This is the thing wherein you can show that an image is appeared to be sharp. Another, what is focal length naman? Oh. What is focal length? Distance ng isang ano mo. Yung distance ng? Scope. Yung scope or yung kayang uh, pinakamalapit at pinakamalayong kayang abutin ng ating lenses. That is focal length. What is naman, what naman yung depth of field? What is depth of field naman? So, what is depth of field naman ano, po? Distance, dist distance between... So, for example, uh, ang depth of field, ito yung the nearest and the farthest distance of an image that appears to be in sharp image, di ba? Or sharp focus. So, for example, ang, ang layo ng ating camera is 24mm, o sabi natin, 6 6 feet. Ayan, 6 feet ang layo. Ganyan. Uh, doon sa pagitan ng 3 to 4 feet. Okay? 3 to 4 feet. Doon yung pinaka-sharp image. So, therefore, yung distance from that 3 hanggang 4, therefore, yung 1 foot na yon ang tinatawag nating depth of field. Yung buong 1 foot na yon yun ang sa depth of field. Therefore, yung image na yon or yung part ng image na yun, doon siya nag appears to be Sharp. Tanong ko ulit. Ano naman ang pinagkaiba? Meron pare anong pinagkaiba ng focusing ring sa aperture ring? Anong pinagkaiba? May pinagkaiba ba ang focusing ring at aperture ring? Sa aperture ring, sa distance mo. Distance? Are you sure? What is focusing ring and aperture ring? If you are really listening, ang sabi ko, focusing ring and aperture ring are just the same. Tanungin ko sa inyo, na, ano nga ba yung focusing ring? O yung aperture ring na lang? Ito yung merong? Ito yung Fabulous merong? Delight. F, F stop, numbers, diba? Dito natin pinag-uusapan yung mismong opening ng lenses. Pareho lang yan. Okay. Kaya nga, diba, kapag, oh, ito, scenario, I'll give you this scenario. Kasi next week, ganito ang gagawin talaga natin. If the F number is set to be in a smaller number, therefore, yung ating aperture or yung butas ng lens natin ay? Malaki. Malaki. Malaki nga ba? Okay. Ngayon, mamalaki nga po. Ano ang mangyayari nun? Ano ang mangyayari sa focus natin? Kung mas malaki yung mas naka-open na lenses natin, what will happen? Mas, ma mas mali na, ma'am. Mas, mas malaki mali. yung matitip na din. Mas focus. Oops. Baligtad po. Baligtad, di ba? Anong mangyayari? Kung kanuwa, portrait yan. Anong mangyayari? 
'di ba? Mas maliit 'yung nagiging focus niya. Malinaw. 'Di ba? Or 'yung malinaw niya. Makinig kayo ha, sa photography, babalik-balik ta rin lang niya 'yung utak niyo. Okay, lalo na sa mga ganyan. Kapag ang F, ang F-stop number mo, sinet mo ng F2.8. Ayan. Ibig sabihin, ano mangyari? Mas malaki yung butas ng lens mo, di ba? Mas malaki yung ating aperture. Ngayon, kapag tinutok mo yan sa subject, what will happen? Yung depth of field mo or yung focusing mo, yung pinaka-focus mo, mas magiging maliit. maliit. Naiintindihan nyo yan yung parang senaryo or parang logic ng ating camera or ng ating lenses? Di ba, nakita nyo naman doon, sinet niya yung mismong image or yung mismong f-stop number sa f-18. What will happen kapag f-18, ang aperture ring natin ay, or yung ating lens opening ay magiging mas f-18. Mas? Lalabo. Mas maliit yung butas niya. Di ba? Ngayon, mas maliit yung butas niya. What will happen? Kapag pinutok natin sa mismong uh, image or sa isang subject. Mas lilinaw po. Mas, mas malinaw. malinaw. Yung buong mismong ano na yun, square na yun, mas buong mali. Now, nagigets nyo na yan yung pinag-uusapan natin? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We're just, uh, tawag dito, na uh, playing the lenses. Kung paano nyo siya, uh, tawag dito, malalaro. Kung ang meron lang sana kayong lahat DSLR camera diyan, try nyo sana eh, 'di ba? Pero next week meron na akong ipapa-download na app at tsaka doon sa laboratory activities nyo, meron din na uh, downloadable uh, suggested downloadable apps na pwede niyo laruin yung mga aperture, shutter, ganyan para ma natin if tama ba or hindi. Nagkakaintindihan po ba niyan tayo? Can we now continue the discussion? Doon pa lang tayo sa characteristics ng lens. Wala pa tayo sa types of lenses. So, let's start now with the types of lenses. First, we have the types of lenses according to the image they produce. Ito, napanood nyo to kanina sa unang video. The convex lens and the concave lens. Madali na lang to papadaliin ko sa inyo. Convex lens, sometimes called a positive lens. The glass or plastic surfaces bulge thick outwards. Mas makapal siya sa labas. Ayan, parang itlog, di ba? Uh, in the center, giving the classic lentil-like shape. A convex lens is called converging lens because it makes a parallel light rays passing through it bends inward and meet at converge at the spot just beyond the lens known as the focal point. Thicker at the center and thinner in the sides. Ito, mas makapal siya dito sa gitna, tapos mas manipis siya dito sa gilid. So, convex lens is also known as the positive lens. Ayan. Or converging lens, sabi nga niya. Kabalik ta naman naman ito is yung tinatawag nating concave lens. So, concave lens is also known as the negative lens. It is exactly the opposite to the outer surface lens curving inward. Ayan, pabaligtad naman. Dito, tignan nyo, mas manipis sa gitna, mas makapal sa, lab, sa pinakagilid. Sabi nga niya. That's why concave lens are sometimes called diverging lens. Thinner at the center and thicker at the sides. What will happen? It is curving inward so it makes parallel light rays curve outward or diverge. Ayan. Yan ang nangyayari sa ating concave lens. So, let's watch this one para mas maintindihan nyo ano ba ang convex and concave lens. Lenses. Objectives. To understand the formation of a convex in a concave lens. And to understand how these lenses work. Convex lens. Arrange two prisms so that the rectangular rough surfaces are facing each other. The parallel rays incident on the prisms emerge on the other side after refraction and intersect at a point. Yan ang tinatawag natin convex. Insert a few more slabs of rectangular prisms between the two prisms. The parallel rays incident on such an assembly will undergo maximum refraction at its top and bottom. The rays undergo no refraction at the center of the lens. Now, 
If we arrange two more prisms at the side of this arrangement, then the incident rays emerging from them also converge at the same point. A single piece of glass formed in this fashion is called a convex lens. We can consider these equally curved surfaces of the lens to be small parts of spheres. The center of these spheres is called the center of the curvature of the lens. The radius of the spheres is known as the radius of curvature of the lens. The line joining the center of curvature on both sides of the lens is known as the principal axis, which passes through the optical center of the lens. The light rays parallel to the principal axis and incident on one side of the lens undergo refraction when the parallel light rays, so we can observe light energy at this point, causes the paper to heat up and burn. through it. Dito naman tayo sa diverging lens. Let us look at another kind of lens, Yan. which diverges the light rays passing through it. Concave lens. Place two prisms with their vertices in contact and arrange a few slabs of rectangular prisms beside each of them. The parallel rays of light falling on such an arrangement refract away from the center. Overall, we can see that the light undergoes divergence and it emerges on the other side. Diba baliktad sila? Doon sa convex lens, anong nangyari? Nag Nagmimit sila sa gitna. Dito naman sa concave lens or sa ating diverging lens, nag pumupunta sila or naghihiwalay sila. Hindi sila nag sasama or di nagpupunta sa isang point. Let's continue. Single piece of glass formed in this fashion, having inward curvature, is called a concave lens. The parallel rays of light incident on the concave lens undergo divergence as they emerge on the other side. If the divergent rays are extended backwards then, they appear to meet at one point on the principal axis on the same side of the object. This so that's how convex and concave lenses. So lahat yan nakikita yan sa inside po ng ating mga camera lenses. Yung mga camera lenses na meron tayo sa mga DSLR natin or sa mga SLR natin, hindi lang po isang lens ang nandiyan. Madaming lens yan na magkakapatong para lang makuha yung tamang focus. So let's continue. So that is the types of lenses according to the what we call that? Uh according to the type of image they produced. Ngayon naman, pupunta tayo sa types of lenses according to focal length. Again, what is the focal length? It is the distance, okay? That, uh, or scope ng ating lenses. So, number one, we have the normal lens. So, normal lens is also known as a standard lens. One which produce an image that roughly matches what the human eye sees. So, yung normal lens, ito yung kung ano yung nakikita ng mata mo, ganun din ang makakapture ng normal lens natin. So, and it which looks natural to the viewer. It has an angle view of 45 to 75 degrees diagonally that the human eye can comfortably view. The focal length of the normal lens is approximately 35 to 70 mm. So, usually ganyan or normally, yan po ang ginagamit natin, normal lens. At sa police photography po or sa ating forensic photography during crime scene, yan po ang parang pinaka-basic na ginagamit nilang lens or parang advisable na ginagamit nilang lens sa kanilang mga SLR cameras. Again, normal normal lens is what we call the standard lens and it matches just the human eyes sees. So that is the normal lens. Yan. A lens with a focal length of approximately 35 mm to 70 mm. Kung ano ang nakikita ng mata nyo, yun ang nakukuha ng normal lens. Next is wide-angle lens. Ayan. It refers to a lens whose focal length is substantially smaller than the normal lens. Mas maliit ang wide-angle lens kay normal lens. Okay? This type of lens allow more of the scene to be included in the photograph which is useful in architectural, interior, and landscape photography where the photographer may not be able 
to move further from the scene to photograph it. The focal length of this is approximately any measurement less than 50 mm. So, di ba, ang sa wide angle lens natin, mas maliit siya kesa kay normal lens. Kung si normal lens, ang kanyang focal length is about 35 mm to 70 mm, yung wide angle lens natin, walang lalagpas ng 50 mm. So, mag-start siya ng 28 mm hanggang sa 50 mm. Basta less than siya ng 50. That is wide angle lens. Ma'am, kailan ginagamit si wide angle lens? Ang wide angle lens ginagamit natin kapag sa mga landscape. For example, nasa dulo ka na ng bangin. Ayan. Ngayon, gusto mong kuhanan yung image. Hindi mo makuha kasi kapag ginamit natin yung normal lens, kung ano lang yung nasa harap mo, yun lang ang makukuha mo. Diba? Pero kapag ginamit mo yung wide angle lens, diba? pag ginamit mo yung wide angle lens, kahit nandun ka lang, hindi ka umaalis, makukuhanan mo pati yung pinakagilid. Kaya nga sabi niya, it is useful for architectural and landscape photography. That is wide angle lens. Ayan. Diba? Minsan kinecurve niya. Kapag sa normal lens, ang makukuha mo, ito lang eh. Ayan lang, puputulin niya yan dyan kung ano lang kayang kuhanin ng pinaka-normal lens. Pero sa wide angle lens, dahil nga mas maliit siya, therefore, nung mangyari, mas malawak yung scope na nakukuha niya. So, wide angle lens, a lens with focal length less than diagonal of the negative material. Equal or less than 35mm or sometimes basta below 50mm lang. Next, uh, another type of lens is the telephoto lens. What is telephoto lens? It has a longer focal length or mas malayo ang nakukuha niya. It provides a close-up image of a distant subject. In contrast to the wide-angle lens, the telephoto lens covers a smaller field of view and shallower depth of field. So, production of flat, decompo flat composition for objects appear enlarged while near object do not appear proportionally large. The focal length of the telephoto lens ranges from 60 to 1,000 millimeters. Yung mga telephoto lens, ito yung mga ginagamit gamit nila, for example, ayan, sa mga telescope, ayan, kung kanwari kinukuha na nila yung moon, so that is the long or telephoto lens. Tingnan nyo, baligtad na naman siya. The more na mas maliit or yung focal length natin is mas mababa. Kanwari, wide angle lens, mas mababa ang kanyang number, di ba, ang ng focal length. Pero mas wide yung nakukuha niya. Pumunta tayo sa normal lens kung normal lang nakita ng mata. Ngayon, kung gusto mo namang kuhanin na mas narrower or mas maliit or mas zoom, therefore, kailangan ang gamitin mo ay long or telephoto lens. Na kasi ang telephoto lens, anong binibigay niya? A close-up image. So, those are the types of lenses according to their focal length. Ano nga yung kadalasan or what type of lens ang ginagamit sa mga police um, crime scene or sa mga crime scene natin? Normal lens. Normal lens. Next, we have also the special types of lenses. Number one, we have the macro lens. The word macro was derived from the Greek word which means to enlarge. And photographic terms, a macro lens is designed with extended focusing capabilities to shoot few inches from a subject. Yan ang mga macro lens. Iba ang macro lens sa telephoto lens. Ha? Ang telephoto lens, kaya niyang i-zoom in yung mismong mga malalayo. For example, bundok. Tapos gusto niyang makita yung mangga dun sa bundok. Gagamitin mo telephoto lens. Ang macro lens, uh, maliit lang yan wherein finofocus niya yung maliliit na bagay. Katulad niyan, langaw yan, pero makikita mo yung detailed niya. Ganyan. And another special type of lens is zoom lens. Anong pinagka? La, ha, uh, tawag ito? Lagi pinagbabaligtad ang zoom lens at saka telephoto lens. Ang telephoto lens, uh, always remember, this is a type of lens wherein it will uh, allows you to capture those far object, yung mga malalayong objects para mas mas maging sharp or makuha mo ng buo, katulad ng moon. Ang zoom lens naman, ang pinagkaiba niya, okay, it allows you to give a quick adjustment. 
quick adjustment mabilisan to give a wide or narrow field of vision. It can be moved back and forth while other elements stays in the place which give the same effect as if the camera itself was moving towards or away from the subject. So that is the zoom lens. So a true zoom lens is also called the par focal lens. One that pertains focus when its focal lens changes. A lens that look loses focus during zoom in is what we call the very focal lens. Ano nga yung kabalikta rin ng zoom lens dun sa video kanina? Kung ang zoom lens binibigyan niya kayo ng um, tawag, it allows you to have quick adjustments of the lenses kung gaano nyo kalayo or gaano nyo kalapit na gusto. Ano yung kabalikta rin ng zoom lens naman? Ito yung tinatawag nating prime lens. ba? Diba? Pinakita ko nina sa video. Ano ba yung prime lens? Ibig sabihin, fix. Sa zoom lens, bibigyan ka niya from, sabihin natin na, from 70 to 1,000. O, ikaw nang bahalang mag-adjust niyan. Pero yung ating fix, or yung tinatawag nating prime lens, bibigay lang niya sa'yo kung 24mm, 24mm, yan, hindi mo pwedeng adjust. Hindi mo pwedeng i-zoom. Naka-fix yan. Nagkakaintindihan tayo niyan. Those are what we call the special types of lenses. Please make uh, take a note for the difference of zoom lens and telephoto lens. Kapag quick adjustment from um uh, farthest to nearest, that is zoom lens. Kapag naman it gives it allows you to magnify or parang it allows you to make a sharp objects far uh, far away from you, that is the telephoto lens. Katulad ng mga moon ganyan. So, that is zoom lens. Halos magkahawig kasi sila. So, next, we, let's go with what we call the lens aberration. So, nothing is perfect. It is a content-free statement. It's an excuse over and over again to explain why things don't work out as intended. So, wala naman talagang perfecto. It's explanation that explains nothing. There's no room in science for palliative blanket statements like this. Science is not the pursuit of perfection. Perfection is a dumb concept to begin with. So, in optics... The deviation for per, from perfection is called aberration. So, sa mga lens natin, kapag merong mali, sabi nga natin, nothing is perfect. Hindi naman po lahat ay nagagawang perfect ang mga lenses. So, ang tinatawag natin sa mga mali ng mga lenses is what we call aberrations. So, more precisely, an aberration is a deviation of array from the behavior predicted by the simplified rules of geometric optics. So, the primary rule referred to here is the one that states that rays of light parallel to the principal axis of a lens or curved mirror met at a point called the focus. So, meron kasing dahilan or sometimes may mali talaga sa lens kung bakit hindi natin makuha-kuha yung focus. So, lenses do not form perfect images and a lens always introduces some degree of distortion or aberration that makes the image an imperfect replica of the object. Careful designs of the lens system of for a particular application, minimizes the aberration. So, there are severe types of aberration effect the image quality. So, the following now are the types of lens aberrations. Again, ano nga yung aberrations? This is the alen. Ano nga yung tinatawag nating aberrations? These are the mali, mali na lens. Mali na lens. Or merong uh, there is an imperfection with the lenses. So, number one type of lens aberration is what we call spherical aberration. So, ma'am, sa mga nabibili namin camera, meron possibility mali yung mga lenses nila? Yes. At nako-correct naman. So, spherical aberration. So, the focusing at different points of rays passing through different parts of spherical lens. It occurs because light hitting the outer part of the lens is bent more sharply and comes to a focus sooner than passing through the middle of the image and it is blurred. Ayan. Yan ang nangyayari sa lens aberration. What type of lens ito? Itong color blue. Convex or concave? Concave, ma'am. Hmm? Convex. Convex, convex yan, di ba? Or the converging or the positive lens. Ano ang pinakaginagawa ng convex lens? Di ba? Kailangan mag-meet siya at a certain point. So, ang nangyayari sa spherical aberrations... 
hindi pantay. So, imbis na mag magbit lang lahat ng yan, yung mga race na yan, at a certain point, magiiba-iba sila ng directions. It will come up na magiging blurred yung image natin. So, therefore, may mali sa lens. So, that is spherical aberration. Yan. Dapat kasi kapag ang ginamit mong lens is, yan, ang ginamit nilang lens is a uh, convex lens. So, therefore, kailangan magmimit yan at the certain point. Pero dahil sa senaryo na to, dahil nga spherical aberration siya, anong nangyari? Iba-iba yung pinaka-center niya. What will happen? Yan. Magiging blurred po yung image natin. So, uh, tip nga lang ha. Sa iba, yung mga aberrations na to, ginagawa na nga nating art ngayon. Kasi uh, sa photography, di ba, sa mga professional photographer, ginagamit nila yung mga aberrations. Masan sinasadya nila para mag-come up siya sa tinatawag nating art. Kaya nga, photography is an art. Diba? Next, kung meron tayong uh, spherical aberration, then, ibig sabihin spherical, hindi nagtugma-tugma yung mga um, rays natin, kaya naging blurred. Meron din tayong tawag ng chromatic. Pag sinabi naman natin chromatic, we're talking about the colors. So, the failure of different colored light rays to focus after passing through a lens. Focusing of a light of a different colors at different points, resulting in a blurred image. In here, colored fringes surround the image because light of different colors is brought to different focal points by a lens. Ayan. Sa chromatic aberrations naman, dahil nga hindi sila nagpantay-pantay, ang mangyayari dito, magkakaroon ng colored. Ito yung parang, bakit yung pictures niya parang may red? Ayan, chromatic aberrations yan. For example, itong image na to. Tingnan yung mga nasa taas ng kanilang mga balikat. Ayan. ba diba? Color red. That is chromatic aberration. So, therefore, hindi na naman nagtugma yung mga rays. Katulad nito, ayan. Sa piece mong paan ng babae. Ayan, ba diba? May color red. So, that is chromatic aberration. We're talking about the colors. Ito naman. Tingnan nyo yung bulaklak. Nagkakaroon ng color blue. Or what? That is chromatic aberration. So, merong mali sa lens natin. Kaya hindi siya nag-focus. Kasi kung tama yung lens natin, walang magkakaroon ng aberration. Next, ito, astigmatism. So, meron palang astigmatism sa lens? Yes po, meron. So, the ability of the lens to bring horizontal and vertical lines in the subject to the same plane of focus in the image. It occurs at the edge of image, sa gilid. The image appears elliptical or cone shape because of an irregularity in the curvature of lens. Anong mangyayari sa astigmatism? Meron bang astigmatism dito? Yung hindi malabo yung mata nila. Uh, pero, opo, opo. anong nangyayari sa'yo kapag meron kang astigmatism? Pag gabi po, yung mga ilaw ng sasakyan. Ganyan yung nakikita mo, di ba? Parang hindi sila straight. Tama ba ako? Aba. Okay. That is astigmatism. Ayan. Sometimes nakukuha natin yung astigmatism kapag overexposure tayo sa radiation. Ayan. Ganyan ang astigmatism. Parang nagiging blurry siya. Pero ang totoo lang, hindi naman talaga malabo yung mata mo. Tama ba ako? Malabo rin po akin mo. Malabo ka din. So, sa, malas mo na lang kapag ganun. <laughs> okay. Yung iba kasi, hindi naman malabo yung mata. Pero when it comes to light or some objects, eh, talagang nagiging blurred siya. Ayan. So, that is astigmatism. Ayan. Unable to focus. Ito yung tama niya yung nangyayari yan. Kasi ang astigmatism, yung horizontal and vertical lines are not in balance. Next is coma. Meron din po ang coma. It occurs when light falling obliquely on the lens and passing through different circular zones is brought to focus at different distances from a film plane. A spot of light, a spot of light appears to have tail rather like a comet. Ang coma, ayan, hindi rin siya nagpo-focus dahil naman sa tail or yung sa pinakadulo lang. Ayan. So, di ba ang sa, ito kanwari yung convex lens, ang nangyayari, di ba dapat dito, yan, nagmit naman sila certain point. Ang problema, pagkarating dito, hindi na sila pantay-pantay. So, that is a coma. Next, we also have the curvature of film. Curve naman, a curve, concave, or saucer-shaped image of an object which has flat surface. The image distance is different for different points of the object due to their difference, di different distance from the axis. That is curvature aberration. 
or yung curvature of field, hindi nagpantay-pantay. Sabi ko sa inyo kasi, yung lens natin, or camera lens, madaming, ano yan, uh, madaming mga lenses yan sa loob. Meron siyang convex, meron siyang concave, sama-sama yan, dikit-dikit, hanggang sa ma-form lang yon or mabuo nila yon para lang magkaroon ng mga uh, adjustment within the focusing ring, ganyan, or zooming, or zooming out. Anong nangyayari sa curvature field? Eto, kung makita nyo, dapat straight line lang yan. Pero ang nag a sa curvature field, yung mga straight line sometimes nagiging curve. Sabi nga niya, from the flat surface, ayan, nagiging curve. Yan. So, that is curvature of field. Merong mali ulit sa lens mo niyan. Eto, next, distortion. Ito, uh, alam na alam nyo to. In ability to produce the same enlargement of the image formed by the edges of the lens as in part formed by the center of the lens. Distortion, eto yan. Diba? Huwag kayong magalala, gagawin nyo yan sa activity nyo. Okay? Kasi lahat ng mga lens aberrations is itatry nyo siya sa selfie nyo. Okay? Itatry nyo. Mag-download kayo ng app that will... Uh, Uh, allows you to take a photo na magkaroon ng ganyang mga aberration. So, distortion. Ayan. Number one, we have the barrel distortion. Sa barrel distortion, ano nangyari? Image magnification decrease with distance from the optical axis. So, the apparent effect is that of an image which has been mapped around sphere. So, parang pinaka dito sa gitna, it is all also called parang fish eye lenses. Ayan. Which take Hemispherical views utilize this type of distortion as a way to map an infinitely wide object plane into a finite image area. So, kapayasan niya sabing barrel, parang nakaubok siya sa gitna, tapos paano sa gilid. Yan. Parang nakaubok pa ganyan. Para siyang baligtad na bat siya. That is the barrel distortion. Baligtad naman siya sa tinatawag nating pincushion. Sa pincushion naman, ito yung nakailalim yung pinakagitna. Image magnification increase with the distance from the optical axis. So, the, vi the visible effect is that lines do not got through the center of the image like a pincushion. Alam nyo ba yung pincushion? What is the meaning of pincushion? Di ba kayo nanahi? Di ba? Ano ba ang pincushion? Para tong foam. O, kung saan nilalagay yung needle? Yung kadalasan, ang itsura nito yung parang kamatis. Di ba? Anong mangyari kapag yung, o, kapag yung mismong kamatis na yun, yung parang pincushion, eh, nilagyan ng needle. Di ba? Lalalim yung nasa gitna. Kung saan mo tinusok yung mismong karayom. So, ganun din ang pincushion sa distortion. Ang nangyayari, yung pinakailalim is yung nasa gitna. Kabaligtaran ni barrel. Sa barrel kasi ang nakaumbok yung nasa gitna. Sa pincushion, yung naka pinakadiin, yung pinakailalim is yung nasa gitna. And the last one is the mustache distortion. A mixture of barrel and pincushion distortion. Sometimes referred as the mustache distortion or complex distortion. Kasi hindi mo alam, tignan nyo dito, dito yung part na to, yung nasa gitna, that is a pincushion. Pagkarating naman dito, naging siyang barrel. So, it starts out as a barrel distortion, closest to the image center, and gradually turns into pincushion distortion. So, towards the image periphery, making horizontal lines in the top half of the frame look like a handlebar or mustache. So, that is the mustache distortion. Ayan, para nga naman siyang mustache. Another lens aberration is the flare or optical flare. Sometimes nga ginagawa nyo talaga to or parang design nyo sa mga photos nyo eh. A result of double reflection from inner lens surfaces. So, dahil nga, sabi ko, ulitin ko lang, madaming lenses ang nasa loob ng camera lens. Ang mangyari, sometimes nagkakaroon ng unwanted light that nagkakaroon ng double reflection. It exhibits itself as a misty, hazy, or cloudy, semicircular part of light. Ano po yan? Ayan. Diba? Ibig sabihin, flare or optical flare, that nag-double reflect yung light doon sa mga lenses sa loob. Then next, we also have the mechanical flare. Flare din siya, kaso ang cost naman nito, hindi sa mismong lens, pero doon sa mismong opening. So, bright spot on the film. Ayan. Because by straight light, straight light, 
from worn shiny parts of the lens such as the stops, shutter lens, mount, or from inside the camera itself. Ito ang, ang may kasalanan dito, hindi yung mga lens sa loob. Pero dahil yung mga mechanical sa labas, or yung mga, kanwari, sabi nga niya, lens mount, ayan, um, shiny parts ng mga lens, yun ang nagiging dahilan. Kaya ang nangyari, parang ganto, Ayan, or parang ganto, sometimes ganto din ang nagiging effect. So that is mechanical flare. Then we also have the light loss. This is the most corrected lenses are coated with substance which will reduce one type of flare and which also increase the optics inability to transmit light, thus reducing light loss. Yung light loss, sometimes sa sobrang kakapal ng lens na nilalagay nila, okay, ang nangyayari, nagkukulangan na yung light or parang uh, madilim yung nakukuha nating image kahit naman maliwanag ang isang subject natin. Pero madalas na correct na ito ng madalian lang. Yan, that is light loss. And the last one of this is the stray light. Last one of the aberration, lens aberration is stray light. It can be reduced or eliminated by using the proper lens shade placed on the front of lens or shield. Sometimes ang stray light lang yung parang alinag ng araw, ganyan lang. Dumaan lang, that is a stray light. Let me... So, okay na tayo doon. Again, those are what we called lens aberration. Ngayon, ma'am, sabi mo, nakukorek yan. Diba? Nakukorek po yung mga lenses natin? Yes. So, yung mga susunod natin i-discuss is yung mga type of lens we're in, they will correct the different types of lenses. So, types of lenses according to their degree of correction for lens aberration. Number one, we have the simple or meniscus lens. This is found in simple or box camera, comprises of a single piece, yan, ganyan lang siya, parang ginagamit din sa mata, of glass with one side convex and other side concave. So, it is uncorrected lens and therefore suffers from inherited defects of lenses. So, that is simple meniscus lens. Meron din tayo mga rapid rectilinear lens. It is a combination of two achromatic lens with almost the same focal length. This is corrected from some kind of lens defect but not an astigmatism. So, ito na yung mga product kung paano nakokorek yung mga lens aberration na yan. Yan ang ating mga rapid rectil rectilinear lenses. We also have an astigmatic lens, a lens which is a free from astigmatism. Kung kanwari, merong astigmatism yung lens mo, kokorek nila yan, magiging anastigmatic siya. Diba? Or other types of lens defects such as spherical aberrations and coma. This is what we call anastigmatic lens. Ganyan. So, pinapasok nila, nila sa loob ng lenses. Dinadagdagan nila. We also have achromatic lens, ayan, a lens which is partly corrected from chromatic aberration and spherical aberration. Achromatic lenses are corrected to bring two wavelengths in focus and the same plane. Ano nga, pina, ano nga ang nangyayari kapag merong spherical aberration and chromatic aberration? Start muna tayo kay chromatic aberration. Anong nangyayari kay chromatic aberration? Hello? Ano po, may red po doon sa taas mo. Uh, kasi yung mga colors hindi nagpapantay, ba? Yung mga colors of light. Sa spherical aberration, nagiging blurred. Ano bang ba nangyari dito? Hindi sila nag-meet doon sa, sa isang certain point. ba? For example, convex lens. ba? Ano nangyari sa convex lens? Kailangan makikita sila doon sa pinakagitna. Pero dahil nga may aberration siya, hindi siya makikita-kita doon sa mismong gitna. What will happen? It will come up into chromatic aberration wherein the colors will not be uh, equally pointed. So, mangyari, magkakaroon ng pagkakahiwa-hiwalay of colors. And the last, the another one is spherical aberration that will make an image blurry. So, makokorek yan by this, by this what we call achromatic lens. Correct na yan. Yan ang ating achromatic lens. Tingnan nyo. Then, we also have the process lens. Uh, a saucer corrected lens uh, for astigmatism. It has better color correction and has the ability to produce the best definition of image in the photograph. So, that is the process lens. Meron na talaga siyang ganyan. Oh. 
ito kadalasan kapag talaga medyo madaming correction ang yung mga lenses, ito ang bibigay nila sa iyo, the process lens. And the last one is the fixed focus lens. It is a lens used in all fixed focus camera. What type of lens nga kapag fixed siya? What what type of lens 'yon? That is What prime lens? prime lens. Basically, it has a short focal length and greater depth of field. So that is the fixed focal lens. So that ends my discussion. Now, I will just uh, discuss ngayon yung ating mga activities. Before that, do you have any questions? So far, may tanong ba kayo? Kung wala, now, didiscuss ko yung love activity number 9. Tatlong activity nyo today. So, dito, ang gagawin nyo sa love activity number 9 is... Ayan. Uh, kuha kayo ng band paper. Mag-drawing kayo dun ulit. Parang yung ginawa nyo sa camera. Ang idodrawing nyo naman is lens. Yung lens. Tapos, lalagyan nyo ng parts. At syempre, katulad ng ginawa nyo dun sa pag-drawing ng camera, you're going to discuss the different parts of the lenses and yung pinaka-function niya. Kanwari, yung focusing ring, the zoom ring. Madali lang naman to, itong mga uh, parts of the lenses. Punta tayo ngayon sa another activity nyo, which is the lab activity number 9. May tanong pa kayo sa, la, uh, sa lab activity number 9? Meron pa bang tanong dito? Again, ang gagawin, i-drawing nyo sa band paper kahit anong papel, tapos picturean nyo, i-paste nyo na lang dito sa mismong document na yan. Tapos, uh, gumawa kayo ng video nyo, dinidiscuss nyo yung mga parts ng, and functions ng lens. Tapos, i-paste nyo lang dito. Yan. Punta tayo ngayon sa mismong lab activity number 10 naman. Kayo, pwede nyo nang gawin to as, uh, as long na natapos na yung, uh, kahit next week ang deadline nito, uh, gawin yun na siya para hindi kayo natatambakan. Okay, love activity number 10. Ang gagawin naman dito, ayan, medyo mahirap tong part na to, love activity number 10. So, the basic categories of lens. Diba, diniscuss ko sa inyo yung mga types of lenses according to focal length, yung normal lens, wide angle lens, telephoto lens, macro lens, zoom lens. Kayo nang gagawin nyo dito. Okay. Uh, normal lens, for example. Oh, normal lens, yung sa cellphone nyo, ano ba yung ano ng normal lens? Kung ano ang nakikita ng mata mo. Picturean nyo and then, lagay nyo dito yung picture and i-describe mo ano ba yung ginagawa ng normal lens. How about sa mga susunod, ma'am? For example, wide angle lens. Yung, camera, yung cellphone ng camera ko, ma'am, wala naman pong wide angle lens. Kaya nga po, meron tayo dito mga suggested downloadable apps wherein you can use uh, mga different effects of lenses para pwede kayong gumawa ng wide angle lens. For example, pwede mong i-download yung parang fish eye lens. Diba? Meron dito, pwede nyo ring i-download yung tinatawag natin ProCam. Okay, ProCam. Uh, i-download nyo yun, uh, madami ring effects yun para pagluroan nyo yung mga different lenses. Yan, wide angle lens. Take ka ng photo and then ligay nyo ng description. Ano yung ginagawa ng wide angle lens? Ano yung pinaka-sizes niya? Ayan. Kailan best ginagamit ang wide angle lens? Ganyan. Telephoto lens, ganun din. Kung wala kang telephoto lens, ba? pwede ka naman mag-picture mag ka na lang kanuari, uh, manga yun, tapos i-zoom mo siya. Pwede naman po yun. So, macro lens and then the zoom lens. Ngayon, ang tricky lang sa part na to, para kasi ma-sure ko na kayo nga ang nag-take ng photos at alam ko na alam nyo ang pinagkaiba ng normal lens, wide angle lens, telephoto lens, habang ginagawa nyo yung pag-take ng pictures or pagkuha ng pictures, ang gagawin nyo is mag-screen record po kayo. Kung walang screen record app ang phone nyo, pwede kayong mag-download sa Play Store or sa Apple Store ng mga screen recording app. So, habang nagtitake ka ng pictures, i-record nyo po. Screen record nyo po. 
Okay? Uh, i-discuss po ba, ma'am? Sige, kung madi-discuss mo. For example, oh, for this now, guys, mo, diba? or for this uh, moment, ma'am, ang ginagawa ko po is normal lens. Ang ginagamit ko is normal lens. Diba? For this time naman, ma'am, ang ginagamit ko is wide-angle lens. Ayan, I'm using this app. Diba? So, screen record nyo para alam ko na kayo nga ang kumukuha ng photos using your phone. So, saan po ang gagawin? I-upload yan kung saan and then lalagay dito ulit ang video link. So, that is what we call the activity number 10. May tanong kayo sa lab activity number 10? May tanong? Kung wala, punta na tayo sa next which is yung last activity nyo, which is the lab activity number 11. Ito, medyo madali lang naman. Hindi na kailangan ng video dito. Pero, para ma-sure na ikayo nga ang gumagawa niyan, selfie naman. So, dito naman, lens aberration. So, Yung selfie mo, i-edit mo. Paano mo mapapakita yung spherical aberration? Paano mo mapapakita na may chromatic aberration? Madami tayong mga editing apps, di ba? Astigmatism, curvature field, yan, barrel distortion, pincushion distortion, mustache, flare, optical flare, and light loss. So, madami naman kayong editing apps para ma-edit nyo yung selfie nyo. Okay? Selfie po yan. Yung kayo mismo. Okay po? Then, i-describe nyo paano nagkaroon ng spherical aberration. Describe nyo ano ba yung spherical aberration, ano yung chromatic aberration. Ganyan. Nagkakaintindihan po ba tayo? This is the sample photo, di ba? And then, dito yung description. Para hindi na naiiwasan natin yung mga copy-paste. Kaya gusto ko may screen record or binibideo nyo yung sarili nyo or yung mismong activity is kayo mismo. So, do you have any questions? Ha? So, kung wala na kayong questions, then I will stop this recording.